I'm Elizabeth at A Literary Princess, and today I'm doing the Persuasion Book Tag. So this tag was originally created by Amrita by the book, and I saw Anne with a book do it, and I thought, hey, I want to do this too, because after all, it is Jane Austen July. I adore Persuasion, and they just put out a horrible movie adaptation on Netflix that I am probably not going to watch at this point because of how many awful things I've heard. But it seems like the perfect opportunity to do this tag. So let's jump right in. First question. Persuasion, like many Austin books, has been successfully adapted on to screen many times. Name your beloved on-screen adaptation of a book published before 1900. And I'm going to go basic on this and say Pride and Prejudice, directed by Joe Wright, starring Kira Knightley and... Matthew McFadden. So this is 2005 Pride and Prejudice. It's the one that I first saw and I fell in love with it. And yes, I do have the fancy ass two disc set. I've got, not only does it have the movie, it has this whole little book that comes with it. And it actually came with a the soundtrack for the movie, but I don't know where that went. Anyway, I adore this version. I know that there are a lot of people who prefer the 95 version, but then there's a lot of people who also prefer this version. It kind of depends on which one you saw first. I saw this one first. I love the cinematography. I love the costumes, the scenery. Ugh, it's just beautiful. And also I'm in love with Kiara Knightley, so like, I would watch anything with her in it. <laughs> and she's just, she makes such a good Elizabeth Bennet, and I just adore this version so much. All right, question two. In Persuasion, Anne and Captain Wentworth really go through the ringer. What's your favorite angsty romance that isn't them? So I decided to go with Liesl and the Goblin King from Winter Song by S.J. Jones. I've talked about this a lot on this channel. It's my favorite fantasy book. Um, so it focuses on Liesl, which is short for Elizabeth, and she, her sister is taken by the Goblin King, and in order to get her back, she offers to marry the Goblin King herself. And I, oh, I love this book so much. Um, these two are very angsty because <sighs> Liesl has, um, bipolar disorder, so that is not explicitly stated in the book, but the author has stated it and you can, you can see it. So she goes through a lot of mood swings and ups, downs, and then you add on to this that her love interest is the Goblin King, who almost has, like he has his, his like very stern Goblin King version where he's, a jerk basically but he also has his real persona which is much kinder and he's trying to balance these two he's in love with her um there's all kinds of there's all kinds of goings on i adore this they are angsty i love them one of um sg jones's main influences was the phantom of the opera so more angsty romances <laughs> All right, question number three. Captain Wentworth is a naval captain. Tell us about a book featuring a lead character who is in a branch of the military. I struggled with this so much. I was like, military? Ugh, I don't really read books about people in the military. And then I'm like, okay, well, a bunch of my classics do have characters in the military. And the first one that came to my mind was Sense and Sensibility, but I was like, I don't want to do another Jane Austen for a tag for a Jane Austen book. So I decided to go with one that I actually just finished. This is Cometh Up as a Flower by Rhoda Broughton. And the main love interest in this, Dick McGregor, is a dragoon. I don't really know what that is, but I know that they are part of the British military. So this is the story of Nell Lestrange, who falls in love with Dick McGregor, but is then forced by her sister into a marriage with a man she does not love. And uh, yeah. He does, um, so Dick does go off. I think he's sent to India. 
um, at one point in this book. And it's, it's, yeah. It doesn't have a happy ending, but he's in the military. There we go. Question four. British naval captains were famous for were famous adventurers. What is your favorite adventure story? I struggled with this too, because I was like, I don't do adventure stories, but I do a lot of fantasy. So I was like, okay, one of these has to count. And I decided to go with The Hobbit. I don't actually have my physical copy here because it technically belongs to my mother and it's extremely fragile. It's been through her, her brother, and my two brothers. So it's, it's looking a bit rough, but um, so I did not bring it with me when I moved. But The Hobbit is of course the story of Bilbo Baggins going off on an adventure with a company of 12 or 13 dwarfs, I don't remember which, and then Gandalf the Grey, the wizard, to reclaim the dwarfs home from Smaug the Dragon. So definitely adventure story, lots of fun. I love The Hobbit. It's, yeah it's good. I, I don't really think that The Hobbit needs a whole lot of introduction. Okay, question number five. Anne is quite a dutiful sister. What's your favorite literary sibling relationship? I was like, I immediately forgot every single sibling relationship that I've ever read about when I read this. I was like, hmm, all the characters I know are only children. This is completely false, obviously. <laughs> um, but I decided to go with Mary Cat and Constance from We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. Not because I think this is a healthy sibling relationship, because it's not, but because they are the, the most important person to each other. And the whole book really revolves around their relationship and Mary Cat not liking that Constance is starting to get close to their cousin and her wanting their home to just be them to always like it's always been. So I do love the relationship between these two. It's eerie, it's sad, it's just great. Question number six. By the standards of the time, Anne was a spinster. What is a book where the female lead is an older woman? I decided to go with Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tokarczuk. So this is, I don't really know what this is, literary fiction mystery thing. But um, the main character, Yanina, is an older woman. Um, I don't remember how old exactly, but I think she's over 50. And she lives out in this kind of remote Polish village. She used to have her two dogs, but it becomes quite clear quickly that something has happened to her dogs and they are no longer with her. And people start dying in the village. People start showing up dead. And Yanina is convinced that it is animals taking revenge for the wrongs that humans have inflicted on them. This is an amazing book, just gorgeous, piece of writing. Um, I listened to it on audiobook and it was amazing. The, I forget who narrated it. Oh, Bia, huh, Bieta Pozniak? I don't know if that's pronounced correctly, but she was great. Oh my god, Yanina is such an interesting main character. I adored this. Question number seven. Persuasion is one of the most critiqued and referenced books in English literature. Name a book whose plot or characters or central ideas references another book. So I had a hard time picking this because I had so many. As you know, or as you may not know, depending on how long you've been here, I love fairy tale retellings. So I decided to go with Bitter Greens by Kate Force. This is a retelling of Rapunzel, but it brings together the story of Charlotte Rose de la Force, who is the woman that wrote the French version of what we know as Rapunzel, and then also the story of Margarita, who is our Rapunzel character, and Selina, who is our witch character. And so it weaves these three threads together, and I loved it. I need to reread it. This was great. But yes, of course, referencing Rapunzel, but also bringing in the actual writing of the story. Okay, question eight. 
Captain Wentworth Made His Fortune at Sea tell us about a book with a self-made lead character. And I went with John Thornton from North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. John Thornton, 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 I can't talk today. <laughs> he is a mill owner in the industrial city of Milton, which is based on Manchester in the north of England. And he falls in love with Margaret Hale, who is a young woman who has just moved there from the south of England, where it is much more rural. And she is used to a very different kind of life. And she thinks that the whole mill business is a bit awful. And so they clash, they have a bit of a Pride and Prejudice-esque romance. So it's like if Jane Austen and Charles Dickens wrote a book, <laughs> because we have all this social commentary with the mills, but we also have this enemies to lovers romance. And yes, I love this book. I love these characters and their romance. And John Thornton, Thornton is a self-made man. He has worked very hard to create his business. And yeah, so he was actually one of the only few I could think of because like all the other ones I could think of made their money through doing shady illegal shit. Like Heathcliff comes back in Wuthering Heights, comes back with a fortune and we're just kind of like, well, he made it somewhere. Or Gatsby who like definitely made it, I think bootlegging, like, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this was the only book I could think of where it wasn't shady illegal things. <laughs> Question number nine. Persuasion has a lot to say about traditional gender roles. What's a book that plays with traditional gender roles? So I decided to go with actually a whole series, but I'm holding up the first book as a representation. This is The Song of the Lioness Quartet by Tamora Pierce. The first book is Alana, The First Adventure. This is about a young girl who decides that she wants to become a knight. And this is in a world where women aren't knights. So her and her twin brother trade places that's so that she can go off to the um, the castle and begin training as a page. And so she's disguised as a boy through the majority of the series and eventually it does come out. But it definitely plays with traditional gender roles showing a girl can be a knight. Um, I know that in, so, <laughs> It's a series, but then there's other books in the same world. I know that later on, um, she, once her, gen her, her gender is revealed, she is ca still called Sir Alana, even though I think another woman who becomes a knight later in the, ser in the, the, <laughs> the sequence um, goes by Lady, but Alana likes to be called Sir Alana. And so it's very interesting and I'm due for a reread of this. I haven't read this since high school and I loved it. All right, and then number 10 is a bonus question. Finally, tell us a bit of trivia, a fun aside, or a personal antidote related to either Persuasion or any other work by Jane Austen. Um, so I guess my little personal story related to Persuasion is that I actually had Captain Wentworth's letter read at my wedding which was on June 25th. I am married now. Yay. So yeah, um, I wanted it as one of the two readings that I had. I had a scripture reading and then I wanted a literary reading. And at first I was going to do uh, the sonnet, How Do I Love Thee by Elizabeth Barrett Browning, but I actually found a musical, um, like that set to music. So I had my soloist sing that. So I was like, okay, I need another literary piece. And I was going back and forth on a few different things. There was um, one of Shakespeare's sonnets, Let Not Between the Marriage of Two Minds. But I was like, I really want something more from the 19th century. And then I was like, oh, Captain Wentworth's letter is like the most romantic thing in the world. So I was like, okay, let's go look at it. Because sometimes you remember these things being more like the movie version that turns out it's not as quite, it doesn't work quite as well. Because I also looked at the proposal scenes in Pride and Prejudice and Jane Eyre, but nothing quite worked. So I went to Persuasion and it was perfect. So my fiance's father read it 
at the wedding and it was beautiful. Uh, we got so many compliments on it. And I'm just so happy that this book that I consider one of the best works in the English language, definitely out of the country of, of England, but also like just across the whole globe, one of the best works ever written. I was just so happy to have it be part of my special day. And then the movie adaptation went and ruined it, <laughs> but not really because I'm not watching it. So that is the persuasion book tag. I'm not going to tag anyone, but if you are interested in doing this, please do consider yourself tagged by me. It has been great chatting with you all. I will see you soon. Bye.